Welcome to another episode of Hey Man, I'm Josh. I am Jacob. Hey man. Hey man. What's hey, up? How you doing? Good man. How are you? I am outstanding. I uh first of all, first and foremost, guys, what uh, maybe the most amazing weekend of comedy I've ever had for so many reasons. This past weekend we did Spokane, Seattle and uh Missoula, Missoula Montana. All three shows fire, mm -hmm. all three theaters, all three jammed, all three completely different and completely awesome for three completely different reasons. Yep. But let me just say the one through line is fucking you guys. The energy you guys bring to our shows for the full show mm -hmm. from when Jacob walks out to when I say good night. It is at a straight up 10. Electric. Electric. It, uh, crazy. I had such chills walking out on stage every single night this weekend. Guys, thank you. It's just been phenomenal. The best time of my life. Full of gratitude for all of you and where we are right now. We are in, for those of you who have seen Jacob's booty in the new, uh, <laughs> Uh, promos that we put out. Yep. More booty to come, everybody. No. Yeah. Three, two more booty shots. Yep. Yep. Two more. Yeah. And so, and then we got some more good stuff. We are cooking with fucking gas right now. Absolutely. Dallas this weekend. These shows are going to sell out. Nashville, the March 21st to 23rd. Yo, I've already talked to some people. The, the drop-ins are going to be a bananas. Yeah. Um, and then the week after that, we're in Cincinnati. Those that weekend always sells out. But mm. excited to go see our buddies at Bird Brain. Oh yeah, I need some new, uh, uh, some new hoodies. And comedianjoshwolf.com for tour dates. We already talked to the person uh, who books us in Australia and uh, New Zealand, so we will be back for that. Love it, um, guys. It's amazing. Thank you so much for those of you who listen to this podcast, who watch this podcast. I truly am blown away by the emotion and the connectivity that we're getting through this podcast. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and yo, dude, uh, first of all, let's just start out with, we'll start out with the remarkable things that happened in each city. Okay. In Spokane, we had, you know, we got some friends who, who may have some weed. Yeah, I mean, they may or may not have a license for, for yes, for, yeah. And um, we may or may not have been gifted two pelican cases filled with weed. May or may not have. It was a basically a pound of marijuana between the two of us. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It was. It's pretty. Uh. But not to mention the mushrooms in the same case. Yep. Yep. I uh, I don't know if we should say his name. I mean, I, he already posted him on social media. Uh, yeah, but we, it we may could, not be legal. Who knows? Uh, we could say his brand and not his actual name. Okay. Uh, Thunder Chief Farms. Yep. The weed is fire. Good God. Thank you very much. Uh, I will say that we may or may not have it with us here in Vegas, but it was amazing. The show in Spokane, I love a knitting factory. Mm -hmm. The staff in Spokane was amazing. Uh, absolutely. The show was fantastic. Fucking straight up fire! Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were, uh, they were. I will say this weekend in in Washington, we had some, we had some. The Seattle crowd was drunk as fuck. Well, I mean, everybody I feel like was a little. But that might have been. And this is what I'm saying. Everyone was so excited to be at the shows. But that Seattle crowd, I don't remember the last time I've been in front of a crowd that that was that that drunk. No, not me ever. And that dude who was. Fucked up on some kind of drug. Oh, bro. Who but, had to be escorted out and almost knocked himself out on, on the a speaker, speaker on the, on way the out. side of the stage. Dude. Oh, I was hoping he was gonna. Dude, when I was on stage, I would say something. Like, I would say something about, like, who was at one of my jokes. And I would just, and I was talking. And then all I just heard was, no way that Dave Grohl was there. And I just looked down and I was like, I, I was like, are you, are you okay? I thought what? he was on the spectrum. Because he would lean his head back. Uh, and yeah. do some of that. Yeah. And, and I was just like, oh, this dude is on the spectrum, but so happy that he's here in the front row. So I'm not going to make fun of him. I didn't, that's why I didn't speak to him the whole show. Yeah. It, it was when I got off stage, I remember sitting back there and going, 
I just don't know. It, I, I couldn't tell if he was fucked up or he was on the spectrum. Dude. That was, I was like, I, I go, I hate that that's the two places that I'm at. Like, I, that's, the, that's the line down the middle is either you're drunk and fucked up or you're mentally Can I tell you what would be a phenomenal game to play at our show? Oh, my God. Autism or fucked up? Because I'm telling you right now, we have a lot of people on the spectrum who do come to our shows. Yeah, we, we do have we, we do actually have a surprising amount. A, a, a lot. And we meet them in the meet and greet mm -hmm. and we meet them with their parents or with whoever they're so with. And others, yeah. And they talk about how our comedy kind of calms them down. We, we, we're there, I, in the meet and greet, every week, I hear people like saying, uh, you know, my son's on the spectrum. It took him six months to get the courage to come up out to this show, but we've been thinking about it and he's here and he's, he hasn't left, you know, th th that kid in Nashville who hadn't left the house in like a year. What about the kid in Royal Oaks, Michigan? That was the one that really, it was awesome. For so me. amazing. So we have so many people on the spectrum that come to the shows, but we also have a lot of people, you know, it's hard to tell from the stage. Sometimes we have a lot of people who also just like to come have fun and, and, get, and get thrifty. Yeah, so that might be a fun game to play from the stage. I don't think I think I don't think it should be called autism or fucked up. I think it should be called autism or alcoholism is one of the two. Yeah, but I think sometimes it's not booze that it's just it's a pill or something. Yeah, I didn't know what that guy was on, but he looked like he was having a good time. Do you remember we used to in L.A. We used to drive through L.A. and and find played that are alive. Pe find yeah people living. in homeless people and we would play, I would be like, hey, dead or alive because they were completely still. Now, it was a joke, everybody, because we assumed they were all alive until one person. I was like, oh, this game might not be fun. Yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> or like, how about that? A couple of times we've been in a parking lot and we parked next to someone and we see just an old dude or an old person sleeping in the driver's seat of their car. And I'm like, ooh, yeah, dead or alive. Uh, dead or alive yeah. is a tough game to play. But, but, um, it's a but, tough game. To, it's a great game to play until it actually yeah, turns much, out yeah. the wrong way. Yeah. Um, so Spokane, amazing. Seattle, the drunky drunkers. Good Lord. And, and you know, I've, I, I've had people reach out to me because we were at the Neptune Theater. That place was jammed. Mm -hmm. So I've had, I can't tell you how many messages I got. I don't know if you got them on Facebook and Instagram. People at the show who are like, sorry for the drunk people. Don't think bad about Seattle. Look, I wouldn't want all of my shows to be like that. No, whatever. But, but, but guys, one of the reasons I love this art form is it's live mm. and it's different every time. It's its own animal. Every show is its own fucking animal. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the animals at the zoo, they get restless. Yeah. And that the, that's different. Right. And so for me on stage, I wouldn't want to do what I had to do that night. Every show, no. every now and then, man, it's like, okay, how do I navigate this mm -hmm. and still make this a great show for everybody? I can't kick all these fucking people out. Yeah. And I can't constantly be correcting in the crowd because then I'm going to be interrupting my own jokes. Yep. So it's like a cool new maze to walk. It's like through. it's like an obstacle course. Like a like a surprise obstacle course. For sure. It shows up. That's for sure. Yeah. But yeah. It makes it it keeps everything a little, it keeps you on your toes, yeah, mixes things up dude. a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And then Missoula, get out of here. That Wilma Theater. To, that was to this day, I hope I mean I posted it and I said it, but to this day, the most people I've ever performed in front of, uh, like doing comedy, like oh, my yeah. own set. I, like, uh, there was the place in, um, Brisbane, Brisbane. Thank you. Fortitude music hall. And yep. I had gone out and we don't went on stage with you, but I didn't do like my own time. So Missoula, thank you. That was I'll tell you something a, else, a great early birthday gift for me. It was, electric. you know what they told me? Cause that's an 800 seat theater. They were like, you know, what was really impressive about this show is that usually with 800 seat theater, you 10 to 15% of the people just don't show up. Mm -hmm. And they were like nine people did the show. Nine tickets, yeah. That just goes back to the excitement. So thank you guys so much. If you haven't had a chance to come out see a show, come out see a show. Comedianjoshua.com uh, for tour dates and tickets. Pretty amazing. Um, and remember, every Friday Night Late Show is a mushroom show. So if you're into that, come out, come out wherever you are. Um, I, my, and I don't know if they're OCDs, but my you know, the things that get me. Here's a couple things that get me, guys. Hearing people eat or drink fucks me up. And if you blow your nose near me, I, I honestly, it, and, and God, listen, I know you got to blow your nose. And so this is not a you thing. This is a me thing. Both of them are me things. You have to eat, you have to drink. And I guess you have to blow your nose. Although I've never blown my nose in, in your my adult life, life which yeah. I don't, I don't understand. Like, 
I, I just don't get it because coming from a dude who has allergies and is like has to blow his nose, not right now, but like throughout the day, like it, it's such a sense of relief going from not being able to breathe to breathing through your nose. Yeah, but I have another, I have a mouth hole that I can breathe through. Yeah, but your mouth gets dry and like. Don't tell me what my mouth does. No, whoa, relax. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't ask what that mouth do. I don't need to know. What does your mouth say? Sorry. Okay, good. Yeah. Is, is the brain broken or is it, is it going to be a second round of that? It's all over the place this yeah. morning, but go ahead. I can tell. Yeah. Um, but, but no, I, I don't get how you've never blown your nose. I like, blew my nose once. And I was like, man, I don't like the way that feels and I don't like the way that sounds. So I, I'm not like, doing that. When it's over and done with, it's it's a great sense of relief. Uh, like I blew my nose before the podcast and I can breathe in my nose, which is great. Dude, like there was a guy on the plane next to me blowing his nose. I almost j went back to the exit row and opened the emergency door. Stop. And was like, everybody up. I, Stop. Oh, dude. And by the way, guys, I, I realize this is a me thing. You have headphones on. Just put headphones on. This is, it's a, I can still hear the, that fucking, and just the nose, the sound. Uh, and then this dude had a straight up handkerchief, like a oh, fucking animal. Now see, that's, that's where you lose me. How do you blow your nose in a rag? You, it's the, and then fold it up and put it back in your pocket and then take it out. Five minutes later and blow your nose again like there isn't snot in your fucking yeah, hand. I, I don't get it also. The handkerchief didn't make sense to me because it's like you blow it and I'm cool with like disposing it. Or like sometimes I don't have a trash can and I don't want to leave my tissue somewhere so I put it in my pocket to throw away later. But to use again. an already wet tissue it, yeah. or like whatever the handkerchief is is just wrong. Like This is why this is why when you call look my grandfather that generation a generation of gentlemen but when you call them the greatest generation, I, listen, any, any generation that used handkerchiefs isn't the greatest generation. Thanks. I'm so sorry. When my grandfather, and I knew this at six, he used to blow his nose and he'd put that thing back in his pocket and then blow his nose and put it back in his pocket. And then like, if I sneezed, he would take that handkerchief out to and try to wipe my nose. And I was like, Hey dude, we're going to fight. If you put that thing on my face. Yeah. yeah don't, don't touch me with that. That's no. gross. Yeah, no. No, 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 no. The, the handkerchief is like the grossest thing. And yeah. so, so this dude next to me was not only blowing his nose, but he was blowing it in a hanky and putting it in his pocket. It, it's just like, I, I don't have that many things and I'm a pretty whatever. I don't, nothing bothers me. Those two sounds, yeah. eating, drinking, and the blowing of the nose, fuck me. Uh, yeah, you don't. That's definitely one thing you don't like. Oh, next week we're gonna do another mukbang video. I'm gonna find a, a good video for us to watch, dude. That mukbang video haunted me for weeks. Oh, it's so good. It, I, I can't. I can't wait to have you be haunted by something else. I'm gonna. Somebody find said, "Watch the mukbang video where they eat octopus," and I was like, "No, mm. thank you." No, the next one we're watching is somebody eating like ramen or soup. Think me slurping. Oh yeah. Oh my god. Oh yeah. That slurp is so grody. Mm -hmm. Just be happy you don't live with me now. I've been eating like a lot of ramen or things that like I do slurp. So Oh, I yeah. would throw you out of the house. Well, good thing. That's what I'm saying. Good thing we don't live together. Yeah, yeah. I would have to throw you out of the house. Or just put or, headphones on. Or you would have to eat in the backyard, which seems reasonable. Uh, I'd set up a table back there for you. No. And you know we have that putting green in the new house at the back in the backyard. Yeah, I guess. But like the, So you could putt and slurp and putt and slurp and then come in. Putt and slurp sounds dirty. Putt and slurp, it was my nickname in high school. Gross. <laughs> Gross. My name was old J-Dub Putt and slurp. J-Dub <laughs> uh, oh, Putt and slurp actually sounds like a place that you would go get like a root beer float or something. Yeah, 100%. 100%. You know what I mean? It actually sounds like, 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 a, like, a, like a weird... Putt putt place, but yeah. like a putt putt bar. You want to like go to the J Dub Putt and Slurp? Yeah, I'll head over there with you. I, I, <laughs> I used to smoke weed behind the J Dub Putt and Slurp. That sounds like that kind of joint. The putt, putt and Slurp just sounds like an urban dictionary term. I'm not going to lie. Who did you smoke weed with for the first time? Uh, the first person I ever smoked weed with was Alico. Really? Alico Hotev. Yeah. Is, uh, so were you 14 and he was like 19? I think he was a senior in high school. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. And where did you smoke weed? The LA River. Yeah, that out of a sense. piece. Yeah, you know. Yep. Not at the J Dub Button Slurp. Nope, wasn't yeah. wasn't in business yet. Yeah, but, <laughs> but yeah, I, I smoked weed with a, a dude named Alico. Um, 
Good dude. I really liked him. He was super nice. Uh, yeah, still he's one of Kate's nice. friends. Yeah, yeah. We still follow each other on Instagram and chat and whatnot. So let me ask Good you dude. something. So mine is blowing my nose. Can you think of anything in your life that you haven't done that other people do? Or maybe like a move? Like I've never seen The Notebook. Can you think of a big movie that you've never seen or something like blowing your nose? Uh, you people who chew with chew gum with their mouth open. Like just the chewing of gum, like people, because like in high school or college, or like yeah. kids my age, they, they chew like, like a lot of chewing with their mouth open with yeah. gum specifically. Like yeah. I'll eat with them and they'll eat with their mouth closed. But when they chew gum, it's like a smacking of the lips and that drives me insane. Also, and this is going to sound crazy. How can you listen to, not listen to that, but be okay with slurping? Because I slurp. So it's, I can't be mad at people for. But you don't mind the noise of the other people slurping or you just can't get mad at it? No, I, I don't mind it also because like it doesn't really bother me because also, and I know it's not like this in the U.S., but in other countries, slurping your food is a sign that you're enjoying your food. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's just like, oh, but they're just enjoying their food. I'm enjoying my food. What's the, there's no big deal about it. Okay. Another, another pet peeve of mine, like sound wise, but also it's a feeling and this is going to, this is going to be weird for some people. It's the reason I don't wear sandals or flip flops. I hate that sound oh, of the I fucking, fucking flip flop hitting too. your heel or the, the sound and the feeling of it. I hate it. Yeah, I'm like, I hate it. Or the, or like the fucking thong in, in between, between the, the toes. toes. Fuck nah. you. I'll wear a pair of slides that are cushioned with socks on, but you'll never catch me wearing them barefooted. Like, I don't know. That's the whole reason I don't like flip-flops or sandals. I just, I hate, I go to the beach wearing socks and shoes, ladies and gentlemen. Like that's, that's how much I fucking hate sandals. I, I don't own a pair of sandals the, either. I don't the, like the way that feels. The only time I ever owned a pair of sandals in my natural adult life is when I bought them for Coachella so that I could use them for when I went to the showers. That was, that was it. So I could keep my feet clean and not be dirty with everybody else. But other than that, the minute we got home, I threw them bitches out. Can I, I tell don't. you another thing that gets me? Huh. When I'm in line, like at Starbucks or something, and I hear a dude come in behind me with the fucking flip, 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 flip. and I'm like, oh, you're fucking nasty ass feet are out in uh, Starbucks. Yeah, it's thing. also like sick fuck. Yeah, there are just some people like, yo, the dogs just don't need to be out. Dude. But, hey, dudes. I, look, man, I, most of us are not keeping up with our feet the way women are and women's feet. Well, okay. You want to have them out because they're genuine, genuine, gen, generally, Oh, I had a brain break. Stroke. There. Yep. They are generally cleaner and nicer. And a dude just got, yo dude, I saw one dude who had clearly shaved his nails down. So they were pointy. So he had like pointy, like toenails troll toenails on all that went above his toe on all of his feet on all of his toes was he was like just like for aesthetic purposes was he using him as weapons like i'm curious to know why he even chose to do that i you could not have paid me to talk to this dude no not a chance that was not i was just like whoa what an interesting kind of possum choice you just made yeah interesting choice animal definitely. kingdom kingdom Kingdom? Kingdom. Why do you say Kingdom? Uh, is it the Seattle Kingdom? Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. They used to play in the Kingdom. Oh, yeah, I know. But th th that's for those, the, the Mariners, right? Yeah. But it's not the Kingdom anymore, is it? No. It's called, it's, it's Safeco. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. Safeco no, field? I'm way off. Yeah, definitely. Anywho. Yeah. Anyways. But I, yeah, the, the, the toenail, that's. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Pretty bad. Yeah, yeah. I, I, but I, dude, that's not the first time. Remember we worked with those kids in California where we used to drop off all that. Oh yeah. The kids had their, their teeth. And that one kid who had shaved his teeth, teeth. down. So they were all spikes. spikes. Yeah, yeah. 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 That was kind of, that was kind of also. nuts. Uh, I was just going to actually say that I was trying to remember where that was. But yeah. That's exactly where that was. Yeah. yeah. yeah that's that good. was, that was an interesting uh, choice for him for sure. Yeah, but, man. I can't even imagine. Um, I can't also, I, you know what also I'm thinking about, I can't even imagine how painful that was yeah. to file your own teeth down to yeah. points. I like I, I accidentally scrape my my tooth on a metal fork when I'm eating and I fucking can't eat for three days because it freaks me out. I have to eat with plastic utensils after that because it's traumatizing. I couldn't even imagine forcibly forcibly sh shaving your teeth down the points just ah ha ha dude it fucking freaks me out. Can I tell you what I finally did that I am not a fan of? And I know you're not supposed to be, and you can call me a pussy. You know I've done cold showers and cryo, yeah. and I don't have a problem with cryo at all. I, I'll go in there, or whatever. Yeah, and you can make it as cold as you want. But dude, I did my first cold plunge in Montana mm -mm. and only got up to my knees. 
Yeah, dude. It was such like the the pain level in um in the cryo is there isn't one. And it, I don't even really feel yeah. that cold. Well, I, I mean, I, I, I guess it's cold. Except but. the last time we did it where it was like negative 260 degrees. But I love it. I come oh, out of there feeling awake and alive. And it's like somebody put just a taser in my butthole. Oh, whoa. First of Where all. I'm like, let's go. Yeah. I, I'm usually not in pain after cryo, but that one, that last one we did, I was, I was definitely a little hurt when I came out of it. For Dude, sure. this, but they had, they had this, they had it set at 36 degrees. Dude. Woo needs to be that cold dude cold plunges ice baths are are brutal awful how, I, how long did you do i did at least seven seconds and but <laughs> wait so but you sat but you sat down in it i put my fucking feet in up to the knees and i was like nah oh I'm not i don't think i can do it oh yeah so my first ice bath experience was when i ran track or played football in uh in in high school and they my my sports med the head of sports med her name is uh coach kramer um, I still, I ran into her in LA. I still, I think when we lived there, she is no joke, a four foot 10, four foot 11, uh, little blonde woman who is just a ball buster. And, but she's super good at what she does. Great teacher. She's super, super dope. Shout out coach Cindy Kramer. But on that note, she was like, all right, time for your ice baths. And it was me and Travis Larson. Yeah. Right? Remember T. Larson? Yeah. So me and Travis are getting in this ice bath and we're getting in them and we sit down and legit, she, I get in and I'm like, oh no. I go, coach, I'm not getting in past the waist. And she goes, yes, you are. And she's a tiny person, but sits there and pushes me down until I am just, my head is above the water. And I'm sitting there and she was like, I was like, coach, I'm getting out. She goes, nope, you got 10 more minutes. And I was like, 10 more minutes? She maybe do 15 minutes in there. Stop it. 15 minutes. I'm going to tell you something. That's too long. Dude, uh, just from what uh, we know right now. Any of it is too long. Yeah. Like, like but no. I, I am going to force myself to get good at it or get, uh, or just tolerate it. Because I feel like, I I feel like at this point in my life, one of the ways to really grow uh, mentally and physically is to force yourself to do things that you don't like. I that are good for you, right? I will I will make a deal with you. I won't do the cold plunge, but I'll do the cryo because I don't like it. But yeah. I'll do it. But I I am drawing a line at cold plunge. Sounds good. We'll cold do plunge ice bath is not. You will not be able to make me do that. Did you, by the way, on a different topic, did you watch the Oscars at all? Uh, I didn't. I, you, you know how we feel about award shows. I don't really give a shit about award shows. Yeah. Um, but, I, you know, I, I like to see who won. So I got like notifications and shit like that. Um, so Robert Downey Jr. won his first Oscar. Amazing. Super, super excited for him. Yep. Love his story um, and, and where he's come from to where he is now. Yeah. Um, uh, Emma Stone won as well. Um, there was a couple other big ones. Oh, oh. My favorite moment from the Oscars, though, is did you see the Godzilla, the Godzilla crew? Did you see how they showed up and they brought Godzilla to the red carpet? Mm -hmm. They each brought their own little Godzilla uh, figure, but their heels on their shoes, all of their shoes were Godzilla's claws, and like they were all kind of in sync. I really like that was my favorite moment I think from it. My favorite moment was Ryan Gosling singing. He oh. was amazing, dude. Listen, I'm watching this dude. First of all, the manliest man, the coolest dude. He and The Rock, I don't know how many buttons they had unbuttoned, but I don't, you know what? I didn't hate it on either one of them. No, not, not mad. You're, you know, you know, Gosling's my, my, your, my guy. Your mom was like, you could start wearing the shirt unbuttoned. I'm like, nah, I'm not The Rock. I'm not Gosling. They went unbuttoned down like to the navel. I yeah, was like, let's you, fucking go. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I think you could, but you'd have to shave your chest. Yeah. And I'm, I'm not shaving my chest yeah. and I'd have to get a tan. And so I'm not sure I'm going to do that. Fair. However, I mean, just first of all, Ryan Gosling to me. And the fact that he set this up, he went 1,000%. This is an actor. He's not a fucking singer. So I know that, you know, to, I, I know what it takes for someone who is super successful in their field to try to push themselves out of that. Yeah. It is so ballsy in front of that audience, in front of his peers, in front of the fucking world, mm. and he nailed it. Mm. And not only did he nail it, he did basically an homage to Mar to Marilyn Monroe. Diamonds are a girl's best friends. He had all men up there. Yep. I fucking loved every little bit about it. His commitment was spectacular. Yeah, yeah. Let yeah. me tell you what I think about Kimmel. I think Kimmel approached this the exact right way. I, I think he's probably a little softer. It was on ABC. Yeah. I think he had to be a little softer. Right, right, right. I don't think it's his natural inkling to be soft, mm -hmm. but I think he's unapologetic. Yeah. He's unapologetic. 
And he was perfect for what the Oscars needed, especially, you know, and this is not a knock on Joe because I, I admire Joe Coy and, but, and I don't think it was nearly as bad as every, as the press. Right. Right. Put it out to be. But after that, it needed a, uh, somebody that the, the people in the audience trusted a little more. Kind of get back on solid ground. Yeah, I think yeah. so. I think so. I agree. I, and also, I'll tell you, I, 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 I personally like it more when they go a little harder. Mm. I love Chris Rock and all these people who go a little harder at mm -hmm. the celebrities. Um, because in general, I think, and this is the same for celebrities and athletes, they're when it comes to getting made fun of, they're a bunch of pussies. Yeah, because they're praised their entire life. Well, here's what I would say. Athletes definitely praise their entire life. Yeah. Because from age eight on, they're being told they're Superman. I would say actors uh, and entertainers a lot of times come from kind of broken backgrounds. Right. So they're not praised until later. But, they, but, but here's what I would say to those of you who have a hard time getting made fun of. Please, let's keep in mind what it is you do for a living. Mm -hmm. Now, I know people are out there, you know, uh, blowing you in the whole time, but... That's like the fourth podcast in a row you've done that. Uh, sorry. You pretend to be other people for a living. You're not... And listen, we all, as artists, are providing escape and providing people with something that I think... I think art is incredibly important, okay? Mm -hmm. But also, let's keep in perspective. It's important... Um, but you're not, we're not curing cancer. No. And so <coughs> we're pretending to be, a lot of times they're pretending to be ridiculous people mm -hmm. and what a great job. And you, and, and you should be incredibly grateful and you're incredibly blessed. You live this incredibly you make blessed life. A whole bunch of money. You make an ungodly amount of money. It, take the joke. Yeah. Take the fucking joke. You know, one of the reasons why there isn't, there haven't been a lot of like athlete roasts. You know, we did one for Poppy. Yeah, yeah. And I, I talked to somebody uh, who was there. I was like, we should just, who helped me put it on? We should do athletes. He was like, nah, dude, athletes can't take it. Mm -mm. What a bunch. They can't take the criticism. David Ortiz is one of the unicorns. But dude, you remember what he said to me? Oh yeah. When, before he got out there, we were walking on stage oh, so good. and I go, you ready for this? He goes, brother, I'm, I don't speak English that well. I'm not going to understand what most of these people are saying to me. <laughs> yeah. It's so, yeah. it's so good. It's so good. <laughs> I love that. But, route. man, I went, you know, loosen up. Loosen yeah. up. You live. And I would tell you something right now. If you did that, it, it, you would make yourself so much more relatable. Yeah. yeah. You know, we're all, we're all out here together having right. fun, you know? And uh, so I, this is one thing I would, I would love them to be just a little more loose about getting made fun of. I think I, Robert Downey Jr. was perfect with his. Yeah. He's, he's the perfect example. Yep. I he, agree. He knows how to take a joke. He knows how to dish it. He knows how to take it, which is important. Now, I, I don't know if you saw this, but I mean, you obviously, I think everybody saw John Cena go out. And, and by the way, I will say, I don't generally watch award shows. I had been gone for four days and I asked Beth, I go, what do you want to do tonight? And she said, I want you to watch the Oscars with me. And I was like, hundred percent. Cool. So it's not really my choice. But I'm happy to be there yep. with Beth doing what we do. But so you saw John Cena come out naked, Amazing, right? yeah. With a costume? Yeah. So there is a rumor going around that this, that John Cena doing that is, a, is some sort of Illuminati uh, hum humiliation ritual to where he, he must have, a lot of people are saying online that that would have only happened had he offended somebody higher up and like, or like there was something that was going on in the Illuminati and, and that he had to do some sort of humiliation uh, something. And that they were saying that him going out naked on stage was 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 that. Any takes on that? Yeah, get your shit together, everybody. No, we don't believe, you, we don't believe in the believe in the Illuminati. Here's what I don't believe in. I don't believe in. Here's the difference between now and forty years ago. Forty years ago, if you had some outlandish Illuminati claim or uh, conspiracy theory, mm -hmm. nobody believed you until you had some facts. Right. Now, so it's not, it now it's a, hey, listen, I'm going to have to prove this mm -hmm. ridiculousness true. Right. Now it seems like I'm going to say something ridiculous. You prove to me that I'm wrong. And it's like, that's not how this works. Everybody. You can't just say Illuminati. Maybe. And this is what I will say. Maybe 
He is a dude who has a good sense of humor about himself, which he does if you've watched any of the fucking movies or shows he's ever or done. Or interviews. He it looked, man, if you saw the movie with Amy Schumer, he was naked in a funny way there too. Yeah. I don't know if that's Illuminati. This is a dude who wants to work in the business. Mm -hmm. He wants to be in front of this entire group of people. Mm -hmm. He wants to show that he has a sense of humor and can act. And is committed. Dude, all of these things. I, or in your mind, he got he he disrespected someone in the Illuminati. And this was his punishment? I just thought, I don't know. I just thought it might be a fun little, like, uh, like little thing to discuss. I don't believe it. Yeah, dude, I'm, I, that's I, why we're I, discussing I, I just think, uh, I just think it was funny. Like, I was watching it, and I saw him come out, and I was like, okay, that's, that's not of, like, John Cena, but I like it. it I also like exactly how he, like John but I, Cena. Well, I mean, I also like how he came out. Like, he didn't just go no shoes. He came out in Adidas slides, too, which made me laugh. I don't know why the slides were needed, but it just made me laugh that he just had. So, Kimmel's in on the Illuminati. And so John Cena must have made fun of Kimmel and that and Kimmel made him come out or somebody higher up. And then that higher up told Kimmel, they're like, Hey, you have to have Cena do this. And then how, how about, isn't it just embarrassing that he, his, the first 10 years of his career, he was just in a speedo the whole time. He wasn't in a oh, speedo. No, he was in fucking jorts, yeah, cargo shorts, jorts. Okay, so but, listen, I, I, undisputed world champion multiple times. I whatever, mean, dude was my that, in that was my fucking guy in jorts. In jorts, he'd still beat the shit out of you. Uh, this is not the point, but <laughs> I think he even said it. More embarrassing to walk around in jorts for the first fucking. More embarrassing. That was the Illuminati right now. Yeah, yeah fact, in. I was wondering what that was. I was like, I think I hear something, but I don't know if I'm correct on that. Yeah, Hilarious. that was the Illuminati. Yeah, but dude, there's nothing more embarrassing. I would rather walk out naked for a joke. Than being jorts for my job. Ba, ba, da, ba. I'd probably be in, I'd probably choose the jorts. No way. Cause one is a straight joke, dude. Now, I'm, I, what I wanna know is did they have his dick in a sock? Woo! Got my dick in a sock, girl. It's an interesting thought. And also, if they have a, cause you know, sometimes when they walk up, they had that shot from behind, right? So you can see the crowd. I wonder if that camera was in play, and if so, they did not have the shot from behind. No, I mean they didn't they did show not it on show TV. Any, any way sideways, right? So I don't know what you were looking at from the side, but from the front, it looked like he obviously was, he was naked, but he was right. He had his dick in a sock, or or he had some sort of uh, nude underwear that they matched to his like uh, to his skin color. Really I don't well. know. You could see the oh, you could see the V. I guess you're right. The V's yeah, pretty yeah, good. Yeah. I mean, whatever he did, it, he, he fully commit to the bit. That's what I'll, I will. I will, I will say that he does. Sure. He needs to do a couple push-ups. He looks like he's getting a little. Oh yeah, does he? <laughs> yeah, does he? Does he look? Does he look a little? Hey, John Cena, you're getting a little flabby, dude. You're getting a little flabby. Those pecs look a little smaller. I don't want to say anything, but uh, I, the people's I, champ. I can see you. Is he the people's champ? That's, that's the, the rock. rock. Whatever, John Cena. Guess what? I can see your flabby titties. Uh, did, yeah, that's right. I'm, I'm talking to you, dude. Yeah, Mr. Cena, I don't associate with this gentleman. Uh, I don't know who he is. I'm sorry for the disrespect. Can I but, tell you uh, what I uh, seen? I seen us some flabby titties. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, John, I seen a, your flabby titties. Now let's, I got my dick in a sock. Woo your brain is breaking this episode. A couple I just different... want to, listen, I'm trying to start some controversy with John Cena. Ba, ba, da, ba. I want, I want, is he a dad? Does he have a kid? I don't think so. I don't know, dude. I don't. I don't want to start controversy with his kid. No, I was gonna say we could have him on the have him on the pod, if, and we can start the controversy. But then just do speaking get him. about the pod, the guests we have for Nashville. I'm so excited. About yeah, it. I'm really excited too. I'm so I, excited. I was looking at our flights. I was like, why are we leaving like a whole ass day early? And I was like, yeah. oh, that's right. We're uh, we're doing shit. We're about. doing shit. We, we listen. We're doing a ton of shit, mm -hmm. and a ton of fucking really fun shit. Yeah. We're going to be doing a lot of cool shit over yeah. the next month or two. By the way, um, I'm calling out in Dallas next week or this week. This weekend. To our friends at Terry Black's. We're coming in. It's my birthday on Sunday. Uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, I, I enjoyed I enjoyed Ryan Gosling and like Ryan Reynolds and these dudes who are, who, who have no problem with a rock. Cena. Yeah. These dudes make fun of themselves constantly. Yeah. I love that. Robert Downey Jr. as well as in that. Yeah. 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 It's guys like Sean Penn who take take it too seriously and yeah. don't like people to get insulted. And hey, come on, man. The, the more serious you get, the more. Although I don't think I'd want to be on the wrong end of Sean Penn being mad. No. He seems to have a 
did have an anger issue. Yeah, he uh, he doesn't seem like the most calm, cool, collected dude of all time. Yeah, no, no, no. Uh, but anyways, uh, tell me something, dude. What would you like? Did you bring anything in you wanted to talk about I, today? I, I, brought a, I brought in a couple things. I mean, there was a... Can I ask you a question? You ask me this every time. Yes, this is your crew neck, and you gave it to me. And yes, I'm... No, no, no. Are your fingernails always that long? Mm, sometimes. Okay. Why? I mean, it's not a plus or a minus. I was just curious if you had never. Well, noticed. I also try to do my best not to bite my nails all the time. So I let them grow. And then there are some days I just see them. I'm like, they're too long. So I bite them. But I just, usually they're shorter because yeah. they were a lot shorter, like in high school and when I was younger, because I had just a lot, a lot of like anxiety and yep. extra shit. So I was constantly biting my nails. But my, I think you and mom will be proud with how much I don't bite my nails or the my cuticles anymore. It's pretty impressive. Well, it, wait, do you ever do nail clippers? Uh, Yes, but I usually only use nail clippers on my toenails because they're a little harder. But like these yeah. ones, I just, they're just, I like the, I, I, these are, these are, I save these for like my anxious moments. These are my, these are my fidget spinners or like what I need. So like when I'm anxious or in a moment, I bite my nails. Dude, that's how that saves me. How about that t-shirt somebody gave us? Your mom is my fidget spinner. God. <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> but also like. Go, go. Uh, I could also, it's weird for me, like, because when we got that, I wish I could show you guys it, because I, well, we don't have it. The the font the dude chose Amazing. for fidget, for the word, just the word fidget. There was no other, all the other words were in a regular font, but this one, he chose, like, the Joker font. Yeah, that was from fucking Spokane. From, like, uh, from from a Word document. And I was like, dude, this shows the type of person you are. Like, I, I know who you are. You went for a, a funny font. Mom's like, my fidget spinner. Yeah, ridiculous. Do you know, by the way, I forgot to tell you this, and then that's because you mentioned clipping your toenails. Do you know... So, you know, on the road, I like to sauna. Yep. And so we were in Dania Beach. And I'm in the sauna. And I booked two appointments back to back. Uh, days. Back to oh. Back. So I'm in the sauna, and it's 45 minutes. And I noticed that my toenails are a little long. Okay. So I, I pick them, mm. and I, I leave them in a little pile on the wooden bench. And I'm like, I got to make sure I get this before I leave the sauna. So I forgot. I can tell. And the next day I show up and I'm talking to the woman who's the only woman in there who clearly was the person who also cleaned out the sauna. Yep. And I say to her, uh, we all set. She goes, yeah, I got you in the same sauna and I got you all set up, you know, for your needs. Hilarious. Dude, she had a tiny bowl with a napkin in it on right where I had left the toenails. And I didn't think about it until I got there. And I was like, oh, she saw my tiny mound of toenails. Gross. And was like, uh. but also here's my thing. I love, like, uh, that's nice of her, uh, I, I guess. Like, it's very customer service. But also, if you just picked your toenails the day before, how fast do you think your toenails fucking grow? I think it was just, she wanted to not me to acknowledge that you left your toenails. There? Yeah. I Hold gave it. her some tickets to the show when I walked out as you should have. Yeah. I was like, I didn't even say, Hey, thanks for picking up my toenails. I go, you know what? You've been so good the last couple of days. How about I get you a couple of tickets to the show? Yeah. yeah it, that's uh. but the worst part is I know that she was like, you know, anytime anyone ever brings up comedy from here on out, she's going to be like, I had that dude, Josh Wolf. He left his toenails. I mean, his toenails I, I, I mean, I've heard worse about other comics, though, about, so I think if you accidentally left your toenails in a sauna, I think that's, you're okay. Like, I've heard, I, I've heard of comics. Doing what? Well, there was comics that we, we've been to, like, clubs before, and the, the staff has told us, be like, there was no bathroom in, in one of the places we went, no, in the green room, so we had to go use the, like, the oh, bathroom yeah, out yeah. the lobby, but um, there was one person, I won't name him, who was a comic who was there a couple weeks before us, and he didn't want to go out to use a regular bathroom, which I don't blame him, but so he peed in a trash can yeah, I know. in the green room, but didn't tell anybody and didn't tip them yeah. at all for having to clean out a piss-filled trash can from a weekend, which is kind of fucked up. And I, now for that club and for those people, those staff, that's what that dude is known for. Point blank period, nothing else. I think you being known or- He's you know, actually known for that a little bit around the country. Oh. Very popular dude, and if the bath, if there's no bathroom in the green room, he'll either pee in the trash can or pee in a bottle or a glass. But here's my thing. Again, if you're peeing in the trash I'm can, with you. 
You're I, like that. Look, I, I'm not. I'm not mad at that. You just don't want to go. Know. Let them know and leave a tip. You don't. You're not tipping it, someone for having to clean up your piss bucket. What are we in prison? It, like what the <laughs> fuck is going on? Like I, you're like you're like oh yeah, I got the bucket. Like I got the bucket for this weekend. It's like oh great, now I got to go clean your prison bucket. Like what 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 are we what are we doing? Prison bucket was my nickname in high school. That's unfortunate. <laughs> For a lot of reasons, <laughs> yeah, I'm not yeah, gonna yeah, lie. Yeah, um, but yeah, like that's all I'm saying is like, just if you're gonna do that, and you're someone who is of that high of a stature, like this is a dude who's pretty famous right now, yeah. like, like, and has been for a couple of years. Yeah, but to do that and to not tell anybody and to not leave a tip, like if you didn't tell them, fine. But if you left them uh, some money or like something for like them for serving you on the weekend and cleaning out your prison bucket would be nice. Can but I tell you? It's not. There was a comic. Um, I didn't know he was known for that. There was a con no he's not, but well, just in clubs that don't have bathrooms in the green room. But still, again, you, sh you could be known for peeing in a bucket, but leaving a good tip. Yep. Do you know I'm what I'm saying? Like, it's just like, ah, uh, so there was a dude that I followed into a club one weekend and, um, I walk into the green room and, uh, you can tell that it's been freshly cleaned. Hmm. but the, there is a blanket over the couch. And, um, the manager walked back and I go, Oh, Hey, I go, Hey, what's with the blanket? And, and, uh, she goes, don't move the blanket. Gross. And I go, what? And she said, so-and-so was here last weekend. And there's just cum stains all over the, Ugh. cum stains all over the sofa. And I was like, what? She was like, we don't know if he just masturbated on because there's so many stains. He just came on. Um, <laughs> and, 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 and like, we know that there was a girl back here, but that doesn't explain the amount of, yeah. Was, what did he and the openers all just kind of masturbate on the sofa? Cause That's... there was just, there was just semen all over the sofa. That it was, like a, I was, it was, it was like a back. It was like a casting couch. Dude. My question was, Hey, how much for a new sofa? That's a great, a great uh, question. Why? Why do you think this like, how much for the? I'll chip in. Yeah, facts. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, we'll just, just go to we'll go to IKEA. You you buy it. Fucking, I'll fucking build it. Let's do it. Let's, like, let's buy a Flurflurklugen, or half a Nusen, or whatever they have there. Pro probably one of those two is yeah something. a Fliegendugen, with three U's and an umklaut and a G E N. Yeah, fair enough. Fliegendugen, but I but let's go to 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 tomorrow. Yeah, and and let's do it. I'll buy it if you build it, but let's not have me sit on the cum couch. You know? Yeah. Was that your nickname in high school too? Come couch? No. But I did ask her. She goes, she says to me, she was like, you don't want to sit on the couch? She's got a blanket on it. I'm like, what do you think the blanket? The blanket is not like, it doesn't, it's not a barrier from the semen that is on the couch. Like, it, even if it is, I know what's right below that barrier. And I know the dude and his openers. Pass, pass, pass. 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 Yeah. All of those. Yeah. By the way, also, sorry to completely change subjects. What a crazy NFL free agency we've had in the last two days. Oh, dude. Dude, I just got multiple notifications for this one. You ready for this? The Ravens have signed. Hold on, let me guess. The Ravens have signed. Okay, go ahead. Can you give me a position? No, because it's going to give it away. Okay. It's it's the biggest market right now. The Ravens have signed Derrick Henry. Correct. Get out of here. Correct. The Ravens have signed Derrick Henry. I'll tell you right now. I got to tell you, between Derrick Henry and the Ravens and Lamar Saquon at the fucking... Yo, Saquon with Antonio Brown with the with that other dude from Alabama. What's his name? Dante. Antonio Brown. Antonio. Antonio Brown is AB. He's the dude who went crazy. That's not the right dude. What's the name? Yeah, the dude, the dude who plays. What? Who his did he last go? name is Brown. Who did he go to? He's on the Eagles. Not Antonio Brown. Um, yeah. No, it's not Antonio Brown. It can't be Antonio Brown. AB is the one who went fucking crazy. Yeah, dude. I know. What's his name? Um, it's the um the huge dude. The 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 receiver. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he got traded from the Titans over him, there. Yeah, him and Devontae S the, the dude from Alabama. Oh yeah, yeah. Devontae. I think it's Devontae Smith. Smith? Yeah. Uh I can't believe I can't remember all their names right AJ now. AJ Brown. AJ Brown. Um gotcha. with because I think they go back to Jalen Hurts running more. So you get Jalen Hurts. So now you got to pick between is Jalen Hurts running or is Derrick Henry? No, no, Saquon. You're you're on the Saquon. Yeah, sorry. Who, who is more at this point more explosive? This is the first time Saquon will ever have receivers 
a quarterback and an offensive line. Yeah, but again, for me, like Saquon's been hurt so much. Dude, he's hurt because every defense focuses on him. Yeah, too many, too many weapons to just focus on. So now Saquon this now. is going to be ridiculous. And then you go, same with Lamar. Lamar Jackson, Derrick Henry. Uh, you have Zay Flowers, that crazy young kid. Odell, who comes back. Yeah. Um, just uh, Andrews, the tight end, who's a fucking savage. I love him. O Odell, who may or may not be dating Kim Kardashian. He has a kid and is married to Lolo Jones. He the is? Because they were cozy, cozy in a bunch of pictures. He's, he's kind of sure he's married? Maybe not, but... I don't think he's married. Oh, he was dating that girl, Lolo Jones. Oh, was it Lolo Jones? Lolo oh, Jones, the famous virgin from the Olympics? The, the hurdler? Lolo Jones? Is she a... Wait, what? Famous for not having sex until marriage. Lolo Jones. Maybe it's not her. We're, I, we're, I, didn't, I didn't know that about Lolo Jones. Yeah. No shit. Yeah. Huh. All right. We are for sure... By the way, how good is this? Hoodie? It's cool. This like crew neck I got in... Mon Missoula. Missoula. I love it. So cool. It's cool. Um, uh, but So Derrick Henry signs... For the Ravens, a six uh, a uh, two year deal, sixteen million dollars worth up to twenty million. And I did also just get a notification um, that Steelers are going to sign former Ravens linebacker Patrick Queen to a three year deal, forty one million. That's he's a he's an LSU kid. He's, yeah, dude's a crazy middle linebacker. He's insane. Like, and then Russ Russell Wilson signed with the Steelers. Yeah, yeah. that's crazy. It that, you know what's even crazier to me about that? is that he had just signed one of the craziest deals with the Broncos, right? Yeah. And now, for his salary, I guess it was like $245 million was the deal. The league minimum, because Denver has to pay $38 million. Denver has to, that's what I was going to say, Denver has to pay $38 million. They're paying like $1.2 million uh, for, for Russ. is crazy to me. Like, that's such a, that's such a, uh, a gangster move on his part. He looked at them and he was like, that was a great season, mutual agreement. Sierra, let's ride. I'm fucking out of Denver. But like, they, they rode out and he is going to make I mean, I think him and Mike Tomlinson are going to be, going to be good together, don't you? I think Coach Tomlinson's Russ's best days are. I think is Mike Tomlin is his name. Who's Tom? Yeah, maybe it's. Tom yeah, it's yeah, a Ladanian Tomlinson. That's right. Um, but, and so I think Russ's best days are behind him. I think he needs a good defense and a good running game, which is what he has in uh, in Pittsburgh. One hundred percent. And 100%. I think that he's going to have to uh, pump the brakes on the diva shit. Yeah, it doesn't work too well in Pittsburgh. No. And, uh, but look, man, I, I can't wait for football season. Uh, this, dude, this last couple of days, and the Patriots have done like two things I think we haven't really done. Let's, let's just. Oh, and Joe Mixon from the Bengals going to the Texans is pretty crazy. Yeah. Uh, Jameis Winston's about to sign a backup deal for the Browns. So he's about to be. Wait, so Mixon and Pollard to the Texans. Or oh, Pollard is to the Titans. Pollard to the Titans, yeah. yeah. Um, the, there's just like all of these are just, I have crazy. Oh, and Aaron Jones. Signed a one-year deal. Well, I forget. He just saw oh, with the Vikings. From yeah. The Packers. Yeah. So there's been a lot of really crazy. Because the Packers got Josh Jacobs. Correct. Which I, in all honesty, love. He's 26, dude. Yeah. That, that means Jordan Love, all those receivers, and him. They're, they're all like 26, 27, get, and under. Get to build a young team together. Fuck yeah. yeah. I love that. Aaron Jones also has been in the league for a cool minute. Yeah. Right? He's a big boy, too. Yeah. And so, but I think the Viking. Oh, and Kirk Cousins to Atlanta, I think is amazing. The, I think that's the weirdest move I've seen so far. Why? I don't know. I just don't like. I, if you're the Falcons, you have great outside skill. You have great, you have Pitts, who's a, a fantastic a talent, ridiculous a tight end. running back. You got a great running back. And now you just need a dude who can get the ball out on time. Yeah. And that is it. Dude, you know what we should do without a doubt, which we didn't do this year? The bets. The bets and, and, and set it up. I, 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 I told you I have a neighbor. Dude, did I tell you about this dude? Y yeah, you told me who he has. He has a formula or an algorithm on how to not, never lose a sports betting. Yeah. Dude, he has won. He's showed me tickets. He's won 219 days in a row. Now he bets and bets against his bets. So he hedges. Oh, so, right? so no matter what he's winning, always one of them. wins. That's like the betting. algorithm he has set up. He always wins. It's like betting on red and black when you go to roulette. Yeah. But, but you don't end up on top that way. He bets the way he bets the algorithm that's set up and probably he needs a couple of this odd for this, these odds for this, this right? He has it set up. Right, right, right. I saw his tickets, dude. Now, not every not every day he's winning huge, 
But every day he's in the plus. It's crazy. fucking crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, I'm trying to talk him into giving me the system. Yeah, we need to know the system. He is not too uh, or keen on that. Here's my thing. Maybe yeah. he doesn't have to give us a system, but he should. when he's p placing bets, he should at least give us what bets he's placing. I how, how, how about that? Like, cause that's not giving up the algorithm, but that's just you know helping us helping your friends make some money. Yeah, I don't know if we're friends yet, but we could be <laughs> friends if we if you wanted to be. We'll be friends if you give me that fucking. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, without so, a doubt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I um, I do want to say by the way. Uh, and I forgot to say this to you. You know, I, uh, for those of you who don't know, obviously Jacob and I are in business together. Excuse me for the burp. Um, I want to let you know, you know, he and I have had some pretty honest uh, conversations in the last couple of weeks Yep. Um, where I honestly felt like I had to say a couple things to you that I was like, Be because, you know, obviously we work together. Mm -hmm. I'm obviously also your dad. Mm -hmm. And so like, it, 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 sometimes it's really hard because as a business person, I'm like, this needs to be said straightforward yeah. and with no woo-woo. But as my dad. I'm like, this I as my as your dad and somebody who knows you and knows how you hear things the best, mm -hmm. it's a real delicate dance for me sometimes. Yeah, and but I wanna I want you to know right now, especially with where we are. I'm about to be 27, dude. And I'm like thinking about that. I'm closer to 30 than I am 20, which is awful. Um but look, I'm a grown ass human being, whether I'm your son or not. I, am, I mean, I am your son, but like I'm a grown ass. <laughs> let's, let's just get that straight. I am actually his kid. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm a I'm a grown I'm a grown man. You know, and I if we're not, you know, you are my dad, but like we're business partners at the end of the day. And there are stuff, there are things that I need to hear. Like I need to hear that shit. Um, I, I there was I you, I know you know how I heard it. I heard it as an ultimatum, which is get my shit together or. If, or figure something else out, which is kind of what I need to hear. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because that's that's what is going to help me get out of whatever the fuck this is with my funk right now. But but I want you to know, don't ever feel like worried that you're going to hurt my feelings, especially in a professional manner. We're business partners, but before everything else, this was your brand and your business before I was a part of it. So to make sure that we're keeping not only our brand, but specifically your brand intact and what you've been doing in the career you've built for 30 plus years, Say things how you want to say them and how you want me to hear them. Don't be, don't be worried about how I'm going to feel. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because imagine like, I, I, you know, I wasn't your kid, but it's like, you know, I'm a little, I'm a little younger than you. And you were like, well, he's a younger kid, but you know, he needs to hear things a certain way. Like you have more wisdom and more experience than I do. And there's no reason that uh, uh, somebody else coming in should hurt your brand. Not, I'm not saying I'm hurting your brand, but I'm not, con wasn't contributing enough. So don't ever feel like you're going to hurt my feelings at a certain point because in this this is all still super new to me mm -hmm. you know what i mean mm -hmm. so i need i need the the guidelines and the rundowns and just shit like that shit that i need to hear sometimes so don't be afraid to hurt my feelings i am a grown man so i appreciate you saying that i appreciate that you and i are at a spot where we can have these conversations i want to tell We've always been able to have these conversations yes. so that, sorry to cut you off but no like, worries. and we say it all the time it's like you know we can be punchy with each other like this weekend there, you were fucking punchy on one day on one day and i remember and i was like yo i'm gonna let you be punchy but let's get the fuck out let's go smoke a joint go outside and get some fucking food yeah because you I, I know those are the three things that when i'm punchy in that order are what make me happy and make me feel better and i also just know that when you're punchy like i, I just i also i know how to deal with you the best when you're punchy you don't take it personally no and it's super important not to because it's like well it's like when people are hangry it's like when 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 iman my girlfriend is hangry and she is like getting feisty with me and then I get her food and she's like all happy go lucky and saying sorry and I'm like look it's fine I know that it's like it's it's like eat a Snickers you're not you're not you when you're hungry you know type shit like yeah that's how you are when you're hungry you're you're not a diva but you're punchy you're definitely a little uh aggro and every little thing is what gets on your nerves yeah and and that's fine and the thing is with people people some people are like oh you know don't don't do that like it's not that big a deal and for me it's like but you know for him, his suck, his sucks suck right now. And that's just what is pissing him off. And I got to let him just feel that. And we're going to go outside, take a walk, smoke a joint, get some food. And he's going to realize in 20 minutes that he was fucking overreacting. And that's fine. And we're going to laugh about it later. And I'm going to joke about him being punchy. And then he's not going to be punchy anymore. It's just, you know, there, everybody deals with it different ways. But for you, we, 
I just know I have to let it ride out. Yeah. I just got to let it ride. It's like the bad drug trips. You got to let it ride until, you know, you get the things you need in your system and then you feel better. I will say, and thank you for that. Yeah. I, I, I will say like, um, you know, ha being able to have those conversations with you and here's why I have them. Um, I recognize in you parts of me that I had to work really hard to overcome. Sorry, I tried to. I yeah, tried yeah, to I, know, I know, I know, I really, I, I, I really didn't. I know, I know, I know. Um, but parts of me that I have to overcome, that that I had to overcome. Yeah, and I, you know, part. I think it's part. I'm trying to, to get ahead of it for you so it doesn't last as mm -hmm. long as it did for me, mm -hmm. 20 years, 25 years. Mm -hmm. Part of it is like a visceral reaction to see, to, it's like a mirror of the, yeah. of the part of me that I was trying, that I, I, part of me that I had to, I worked really hard to try to get rid of. 100%, I get it. And that I don't, I'm, I don't want you to suffer the same fool's errand. Uh, and, that and, I did, and, you know? and, yeah, and I appreciate that. I know it's just like you looking out for me because I, I, I really am just a mini you in a whole magnitude of ways, right? But at the same time, and I'm, uh, I'm gonna say this because I know it's partially why you know it, it's why you hate having these conversations, is because one, mainly you don't like to nag me because you're just like, you don't like being that person. But also mm -hmm. two, you, I know you want to help me not do the same, make the same mistakes, or uh, mistakes or whatever you want to call them that you did. But at the same time it is my life. Like the only way that I'm going to learn is by either going through it or making the conservative effort to not, do you know what I mean? We can have all these talks and everything that we, you know, we do and the relationship that we have. But at the end of the day, also, you know, it's, it is my life and it's my choice. And I don't mean that in a bitchy way, but yep. in my brain, it's my choice whether or not to make those conservative efforts or, or it's like concerted, you know, concerted, sorry, thank you. Um, concerted efforts to, to, you know, better myself or, um, or, or do what I've been doing, you know, but, um, but at, you know, at the same time, it's like, it's, I want you to know, it's not your responsibility. And I'm trying to not say that again, to be bitchy, but to help maybe take some weight off your shoulders. It's not your responsibility to make sure that I don't make the same mistakes or do things that, that's where that, we, uh, as your dad and as the person who you're in business with, I think it is my responsibility. Who else to help show people, not this is not for you, but for anybody in business or mm -hmm. in life, somebody who's gone through it, those are the people that should be handing down experience, yeah. handing down um, advice, handing down, hey, this is how you, this is how you, you know, avoid this minefield. Right, right. And so like, that's why I've never understood, you know, some comics or... A, a, entertainers or who don't reach back. It's all about reaching back. Yeah. Absolutely. It's all about reaching back. It's all about remembering where you, where you came from. It's sharing important. your experiences and making it easier or better for the next person. And so for you, especially, I do feel like it's my responsibility. Yeah. I do feel like it's my responsibility to be like, yo, dude, I stepped in that mine. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to make sure you don't step on that mine because that mine is going to fuck up the next five years. Yeah. Yeah. I understand that. And so I, I, I hear what you're saying. It is ultimately your choice mm -hmm. whether you take it in or not. Right. Um, but I, I do appreciate that, you know, the last couple of weeks we've had some yeah. legit conversations. Absolutely. And, uh, and you took it, you took them very well. I'm a grown man, dude. Uh, this is business. So crazy to me. This is, you're a grown this man. is business at the end of the day, man. We're a family hundred percent, but you know, this is, this is a partnership. This is a business. It, family always comes first, but like, at a certain point, sometimes we have to put it to the side and put a pin in what the fuck needs to happen. Yeah. That's just, that's just fucking business, dog. So I'm, Dude, I'm not mad at that. I love you. Love you too. Um, thank you. We're at our time. That's, yeah. that's it. Thank you guys again. Always so much for tuning in the newbies, the oldies, um, all you guys, none of this would be possible without y'all. Thank you guys so much again, Dallas, Texas this weekend. It's my birthday on Sunday. I'm not performing on Sunday, but it's my birthday this weekend. So motherfuckers better come out. We're going to have some fun. My energy is going to be up and through the fucking roof this weekend. So if you want to see a good set, come out and come see us. I mean, it's a good set wherever we are, but come see us. It's going to be so much fun. 
Uh, we're doing Terry Blacks this weekend for fucking I think sure. our, I think our buddy Elton Caste is going to come through for a couple shows. Oh, Elton will be with us. That's super awesome. Um, but come see us. And if you can't come to Dallas, Texas, ComedianJoshWolf.com for tour dates and tickets. Hey, look, again, I'm going to say it because last week he said it, but I'm going to fucking say it. Hey, my LA people, I know y'all are there and I've talked to a bunch of you, but I'm going to post this again because I want everybody to fucking hear it and to know it. May 9th, we are at the Bourbon Room in fucking Hollywood on Hollywood Boulevard for Netflix is a Joke Comedy Festival. Come out, y'all. Look, uh, I've had friends from uh, that lived in LA with me a lot who always text me and go, when are you doing a show in LA? Hey, motherfuckers, it's happening on May 9th, all right? So I've texted a bunch of you. All of you have already gotten tickets. Text your friends, tell more people. And yo, New York, I know we're, we're Boston fans, but hey, put the rivalry aside for a fucking little bit, all right? New York, April 13th, we're at the Gramercy Theater. One night, one show only, I think also too, yes, right? Yes, yes. Yo, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing. That's all I got to say about it. Come see us. And also, I'm going to be going- very special guests coming down to that New York show. Facts. And I will, I will be saying also, this will be a no diet weekend. Because we're in New York, I'm just making it, I'm taking the exclusive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I hate the way you say the word diet, like I make well, you count calories. Well, it's cheats. Like we don't, like we don't do a lot of carbs, it's a lot of, like, or a lot of protein and, you know, but it's all, again, I, I eat steaks every weekend, so I'm not yeah. fucking mad. Yeah. But this is the home of the carb, like of the gluten, the gluten, the, the, the gluten. We're going to see our buddy, the world. Ross Matthews is going to come. I can't wait. Um, but so like we're doing pizza. We're doing uh, Italian. I'm going to try to talk him into getting Drew Barrymore to come to the show too. Are we going to talk Ross to getting on stage? He, we don't have to talk him into it. Oh, he definitely would. Yeah, I know he would. Do you want me to have him come on stage? Uh, if he wants, I, I would love, I mean, I'd just be happy that he's there. Okay. Um, but so those are the two shows that, you know, we're always, we, you know, we know that you guys hear us and we know that you are in those cities and states. So come see us. Um, comedianjoshwolf.com for tour dates and tickets for any other place in the country. We got some great dates coming up, some great shows. Um, another, another one, uh, is 420 weekend. We're in Alberta, Canada. So that's, that's going to sell out. Yeah. I know. I know. Yeah. I'm just saying that's going to be another one, but y'all come out, come say hi. Uh, comedianjoshwolf.com for tour dates and tickets. Josh Wolf comedy on all platforms. Uh, it's Jake Wolf on TikTok, Jake underscore Wolf on Instagram. Thank you guys. As always. Uh, as, and as usual, this wouldn't be possible without y'all. So do something nice for someone today. Tell someone you love them. We'll see you next week. Super grateful for all of you. For all of you. Mm -hmm. And the next time we talk, I'll be 27. Let's go. Mic drop. Later. Love you.